Welcome to KSG News, where you get all the latest updates from across the globe to help with your exam preparations. We begin with GS Paper 2. This is about education. Kerala took a major step forward in its progress towards a knowledge society with the inauguration of the country's first digital university based in Technocity at Mangalapuram on the 20th of February 2021. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan presided over the function where Governor Arif Muhammad Khan, who is also the Chancellor of the Kerala University of Digital Sciences, Innovation and Technology, unveiled the varsity plaque. The launch of the digital university is part of the state's resolve to embrace new technologies and desire to use them for bringing positive changes in the life of people and become a global hub for higher learning and technology. The society expects the digital university to provide intellectual support to lap up the new world of opportunities arising through artificial intelligence, blockchain, data analytics and other digital transformation courses. The digital university aims at utilizing the developments in digital technology for social progress, the benefits of uh, digital technology should be made available for people in various walks of life. The university is set up by upgrading two decade old Indian Institute of Information Technology and Management Kerala, a center of excellence in information technologies established by the government of Kerala. It is formed with the vision of creating a futuristic institution of higher learning, aspiring to get a global benchmark in digital technologies and its management. The the university starting with five schools of knowledge, School of Computer Science and Engineering, School of Digital Sciences, School of Electronic Systems and Automation, School of Informatics and School of Digital Humanities and Liberal Arts covering science, technology and humanities aspects of the digital world. Towards this, specialized centers in areas like blockchain, AI and ML, cyber security, big data analytics biocomputing and geospatial analytics are to be set up in collaboration with leading international academic research and industry bodies. Shifting focus to GS Paper 2, this is in connection with global grouping. GAVI or GAVI, the Vaccine Alliance, has said that it has signed a memorandum of understanding with the US vaccine maker Novax and Serum Institute of India for the supply of COVID-19 vaccines to the WHO-backed COVAX facility. The MOU will combine the existing agreement that SII and Novax have for vaccine supply, which includes a commitment to provide a total of 1.1 billion doses of Novax's candidate NVX CoV2373 to the COVAX facility. Now, what does this mean? The Novavax vaccine has shown 90% efficacy in Phase 3 clinical trials in the UK that enrolled more than 15,000 participants aged 18 to 84 years, of whom 27 were over 65. The vaccine was shown to work against the more infectious UK strain. However, its efficacy against the group detected with the South African strain was 60%. In India, SII is running a bridging trial for Novax. India is considered a middle-income country under COVAX scheme and is expected to receive doses under this pact. This agreement brings the COVAX facility a step closer to its goal of supplying vaccines globally and ending the acute phase of the pandemic. Gavi said the 1.1 billion cumulative volumes of doses will be made available to the facility via a final advance purchase agreement with Novavax once signed and an existing pact between Gavi and the Serum Institute of India made possible by a Novavax SII technology transfer agreement at no cost and facilitated by UNICEF's agreement with SII. And now moving on to GS Paper 3, this is in connection with science and technology. Solar winds may have led to Mars losing its atmosphere. This according to a computer simulation study which confirms the long-held belief that planets need a protective magnetic field to block such harmful radiations in order to sustain life. While factors like the existence of a moderately warm, moist atmosphere and liquid water determine whether a planet can host life, the study, published in the Royal Astronomical Society, noted that the ability of planets to generate magnetic fields around them is an overlooked aspect. Now, what is the significance of this? According to the scientists, Arnab Basak and Debiendu Nandi from the Indian Institutes of Science Education and Research, Kolkata, these magnetic fields enveloping planets can act like a protective umbrella shielding the atmosphere from the super-fast plasma winds of the Sun. On the Earth, 
They said a geodynamo mechanism generates the planet's protective magnetosphere, an invisible shield that stops the solar wind from eroding away our atmosphere. In the current study, the scientists simulated two scenarios of the red planet, one considering a young Mars with its magnetosphere intact and the other with the planet without this force field. The simulations revealed that in the young Mars, the magnetosphere may have acted as a shield stopping the solar wind from coming too close to the planet's atmosphere, thus protecting it. Without an intrinsic magnetosphere, the researchers said the solar wind magnetic field may have first draped around and slipped past Mars, carrying bits of the planet's atmosphere away, eventually eroding it completely. Alternatively, planets that lose their magnetic field eventually become inhospitable with loss of their atmosphere. The researchers believe the study has important implications for the search for habitable exoplanets via initiatives like NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and ISRO's ExoWorlds mission. And now we move on to GS Paper 3. This update is in connection with environment. The World Bank is working with the International Monetary Fund or the IMF on ways to factor climate change into the negotiations about reducing the debt burdens of some poor countries. This is in, according to a statement from the World Bank President David Malpass. Three countries, Ethiopia, Chad and Zambia, have already initiated negotiations with creditors under a new common framework supported by the group of 20 major economies, a process that may lead to debt reductions in some cases. Now, what is this all about? The coronavirus pandemic has worsened the outlook for many countries that were already heavily indebted before the outbreak, with revenues down, spending up and vaccination rates lagging far behind advanced economies. China, the United States and other G20 countries initially offered the world's poorest countries temporary payment relief on debt owed to official creditors under the Debt Service Suspension Initiative. In November, the G20 also launched a new framework designed to tackle unsustainable debt stock. The World Bank and the IMF were studying how to twin two global problems the need to reduce or restructure the heavy debt burden of many poorer countries and the need to reduce fossil fuel emissions that contribute to climate change. The World Bank and the IMF play an important advisory and consultative role in debt restructuring negotiations since they assess the sustainability of each country's debt burden. Many developing countries require huge outlays to shore up their food supplies and infrastructure as a result of climate change. Governments must also spend a large amount on alternative energy projects but lack the resources to pay for those needed investments. The poorer countries are not really emitting very much in terms of greenhouse gases but they are bearing the brunt of the impact from the rest of the world. That's it in this video from KSG News. Do stay tuned to our channel for more such short, concise and informative videos.